What do endogenous controls, exogenous controls, and mean expression value mean to you? You guessed it. Today we're answering your questions about normalization methods for microRNA quantification. MicroRNAs, or miRNAs, are small, approximately 22 base pair nucleotide non-coding RNAs that regulate gene expression. MicroRNAs can be quantified by real-time PCR using TACMAN assays. In a microRNA expression experiment, variation in the amount of starting material, sample collection, RNA preparation and quality, and reverse transcription efficiency can contribute to quantification errors. For these reasons, it's important to use proper normalization controls when quantifying microRNAs. So let's get technical and look at our lab book. There are three types of normalization methods commonly used for microRNA analysis by qPCR. Endogenous controls, exogenous controls, and mean expression value normalization, or global mean normalization. Normalization using endogenous control genes is currently the most accurate method to correct for potential differences in RNA input or RT efficiency bias. Exogenous controls, or spike-ins, are typically used to monitor extraction efficiency or sample input amount for difficult samples, such as plasma, serum, or other biofluids. Large-scale microRNA expression profiling studies may utilize global mean normalization, which uses the calculated mean of all microRNAs in a given sample as the normalizer. Historically, non-coding RNAs, such as snRNAs or snow RNAs, were used as endogenous normalizers for microRNA quantification. But more recently, Key opinion leaders in the microRNA community have moved away from the use of snow RNAs, snRNAs as endogenous controls for the following reasons. They're bigger than microRNAs. They don't mirror the physiochemical properties of microRNAs. They have different cellular processes and different functions than microRNAs. The expression levels of snow RNAs and snRNAs have been recently found to be associated with cancer and prognosis. The microRNA community has also suggested that the ideal endogenous control has gene expression that is relatively constant and moderately abundant across a variety of tissues and cell types and treatment. MicroRNAs that are uniformly expressed can be used as an endogenous control. There are several microRNAs that have been shown in the literature and in experimental studies to be expressed at relatively constant levels across many different tissue types. These may work as good endogenous controls for your experimental condition. By the way, it is recommended to validate two or more of these microRNAs as endogenous controls for the target cell, tissue, or treatment, because no single control can act as a universal endogenous control for all experimental conditions. In addition, synthetic microRNA molecules can be used as spiking controls and are extremely useful as exogenous controls in difficult samples such as serum and plasma. As the name implies, spike-ins, or exogenous controls, are synthetic RNA molecules that are added to the sample. A spike-in control should be a target sequence that is not present in your sample. For example, ATH mir 159A is not present in humans, so it is a good exogenous control for human. So let's do a quick recap. There are three different normalization methods exogenous controls, endogenous controls, and mean expression value normalization. And these normalization methods allow you to control for certain aspects of your experimental process when analyzing microRNAs by qPCR. If you have more questions on normalization methods or any burning qPCR questions, make sure to let me know and ask TACMAN at thermofisher.com slash ask.